Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beastars reviews. For those of you who are new, this is a discussion style channel where I would go through and read a chapter, analyzing it as I come across anything of note. Um, last we left off, pretty much Legosi vowed that he, would, he wouldn't let Tim's death be in vain, so he's actively going to be involved in trying to figure out who killed uh, Tim, the alpaca. So, from the looks of it, this cover page, it looks like this is going to be a Louis-centric chapter. Last we left off with Louis, he was the new boss of the Shishigumi who had uh, just dropped out of school. Or at least was trying to drop out of school. So, I'm excited to get started. We are on chapter 56, The Savior's Seduction. The leader of the Shishigumi is a deer. Let's see. I've heard that you've all been all over the back alley market trying to gain more authority. Hmm. <laughs> and now you finally come to my shop? So I'm assuming you told the same stupid deal to the other shops you went to. Snapping Turtles Butcher Shop. A shop that participates in the illegal practice of selling meat. Okay. So I guess we're introduced. We have names to their faces now for the remaining members of the Shishigumi. Last time... Uh, we got an what we got a head count. There was thirty-eight lions in the Shishigumi, and it looks like they're down to three, four, five, six, seven, eight lions plus Louis, who's the new boss. So, from right to left, we have Sabu, who's age forty-three; Free, who's age thirty; Agara, who's age twenty-five; Dolph, age thirty-three; Ibuki, age thirty-five; Jinma, age forty; and Miguel, age forty-one. Like, out of the character designs for the Shishigumis, uh, before they look like just pretty much generic lions, but since they're narrowed down to eight, I'd say they're pretty iconic, but the ones who stand out to me the most are the one with glasses right here, Ibuki, and I would say Free right here, because uh, I believe Free was one of the first lions that we got introduced to. Um... If I'm remembering correctly, I think he's the one who... No, no, no. It was Ibuki who's the one that uh, recommended that Louis become the new boss of the Shishigumi. I think Free just wanted to eat him. <laughs> I'm going to want to eat him someday. Yeah, I like Free's uh, character design a lot because he just gives off that punk aesthetic. Like that, that punk, you know, mafia. That punk mafia feel, you know? <laughs> and I wonder if his name has any meaning, too. Maybe the line that's the freest out of the bunch. And I call out Ibuki right here as well. Because he gives off that, uh, that even though he's age 35, he's not the oldest, but he gives off that, that, I don't know, that, uh, that, f what's it called? Like that granddaddy vibe of the Shishigumi, at least a little bit. I think it's just his glasses that do it. So, I don't know. It just gives off a certain feel of wisdom when I look at his character compared to the rest of the Shishigumi right here who are pretty much like thug like and Agata's age 25 so he's the youngest right here so that's kind of interesting and Beastars does a really good job of making you want to know more about these characters now that we have faces to the name and they're going to be important I assume they're going to be much more important to Louie right so I'd be interested to know their backstory and how they ended up in the Shishigumi <laughs> anyway, so they have a butcher shop where they get uh, illegal illegal meat. So we came here because we wanted to express our gratitude. We want you in this deal so you can live out the entirety of your turtle lifespan. As the lions of the Shishigumi, we will do everything in our power to protect all the shops in the back alley market. But for our protection, you'll have to give us half of your profits. Okay, so they're kind of, they're trying to like extort them. Either you pay up, or uh, something bad's going to happen to you, so it's kind of like a shakedown. Let's see. We're not one to judge, but the back alley market is filled with danger thanks to the foxes of the Inarigumi, the jaguars of the Madaragumi, and the monitor lizards of the Dokugumi. We'll prevent those crazy groups from causing harm to your shops. Okay, so that's good to know. There's there's different gangs of carnivores other than the lion gang. So we got foxes, we got jaguars, and we got lizard men. <laughs> so interesting. Hmm. 
So the Inari Gumi, it seems like their their members are majority majority of the uh, women, the majority of their of their members. Hmm. Don't make me laugh. You're the craziest one of them all. I still haven't forgotten how you caused havoc on my shop. I reject your deal. Hmm. Foolish. I'll leave the negotiations to you, boss. Good grief. In that case, I'll allow me, allow me to make it up to you. Okay, so. <laughs> Alright, so I like, I like small stuff. Like in manga, I've said this before. Like, just how they do business. This, they've caused him grief in the past, right? So naturally, he wouldn't want to do business with them, right? So how do you get, so my question is, I like seeing negotiations go down in real life too. So, how do you get someone on your side? You know, how do you how do you leverage what you have to offer and get them to bite? Well, in this case, get the snapping turtle to bite onto what you're selling, right? Because let's see. I'm trying to figure out what the Shishigumi have to gain from having this butcher shop here, right? Maybe more access to higher quality meat, right? influence right more profits okay so that's what so that's what they want now how are they gonna get it what does louis have to offer them now that he's stepping in the shishigumi have made many mistakes in the past but you don't have to worry anymore these unruly cats are being trained by me their new boss see i like how he just has this like as soon as he he's ready to, he's ready to come in his grand entrance his troops stand side to side at attention because we're framing Louis. You know, he's the big boss. He's a he's a herbivore, but he's the boss of the group, and they will know it, right? Because even though Louis was kind of like standoffish with them at first, Louis at his best when he's at the center of attention, just like Gino, and he's like in control of the room, right? And Louis, what we know about Louis is he has excellent charisma skills and his ability to captivate an, audi an audience and want to get people to follow him. So I bet they're going to leverage that. That's exactly what they have. <laughs> and I love this scene of him just, you know, he's in control, right? Because what do you do? Like when, when you're talking to people, you get down on their level, right? Now, mind you, Louis not exactly at his level. He's the boss, right? At first, notice how, oops, notice how uh, everyone was positioned, right? In a confrontational manner, <laughs> low key, trying to intimidate this guy to, you know, do what they do what, um, do what they want him to do, you know, give them a percentage of his profits, you know, and work with the Shishigumi. But Louis, he comes over here and he's like casually just strolls up. And he sits down, you know, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Let's see what he has to say. The new herbivore boss. I've heard the rumors, but I didn't think they were true. The Shishigumi's affair seem well known in the back alley market. That makes things easier. <laughs> he just strolls right on in like he owns the place. You have financial problems, don't you? Owner, you can use me to your benefit. A contract between your shop and the new Shishigumi will be a small yet significant step towards a better back alley market. Lately, there's been an increasing number of carnivores and hypocrites who find it difficult to use the back alley market. But it's because they're shutting down their feral instincts. That, carnivi that carnivorous murders have been increasing by the years. Simply put, they're overstraining themselves. Okay, so that's interesting, right? That's very interesting. So the animals who try to wean themselves off the back alley market. So I'm pretty sure meat in this world is an analogy to like drugs and stuff. You know, kind of like the U.S. is war on drugs and stuff like that. But or what's it called? I believe it was like opiates or something that the British were selling. I'm bad at RRO history, but I remember anime history quite well. But anyway, so it's like once they stop taking meat, once they stop eating meat. They go through withdrawal symptoms and maybe their their uh, feral instincts get the better of them while they're like while they're out in society most notably at night because that's when the majority of the murders and stuff take place right that's what was said in the previous chapters 
so they overest they overstrain themselves by not eating meat so maybe they just have to taper off it I don't know that's kind of interesting to think about hmm so once you eat meat I'm guessing you can't just go back to eating vegetables like nothing happened that's what I think at least if meat's kind of like a drug like once you get a taste you just you have to have more of it and biologically um, carnivores they need meat there's no way around it or at least some form of it you know of sustenance right now what carnivores need most is allowance if you see it if you see that even one herbivore recommends the use of the back alley market then you can bet more carnivores will be coming here this is a smart deal that will contribute to the peace of the outside world the news will travel fast my being a deer will bring solace to the back alley market well, wait hold on are you insane don't you know that I sell deer meat here Louis doesn't care I mean he does care but they're already dead because I, I said before that what he's offering right now like okay so Louis just kind of confirmed it that the animals who have who decide to who've had meat and decide to be hypocrites and you know stop coming to the back alley market they're more likely to predict uh, to prey on other to other on other animals in their society you know like herbivores in particular you don't hear about carnivore and carnivore like devourings you hear carnivore herbivore devourings right so this may seem wrong like oh no Louis breaking bad and why I can kind of like his reasoning for this hasn't been explained yet but what I said before was like when it comes to crime like if you're going to have a place like the black market that's fulfilling uh, a void uh, well that's fulfilling a need that society isn't being fulfilling that society isn't fulfilling right that's why that's why black that's why uh, black markets exist even in the real world right and I always said that cr having crime in one area it, like located and you know kind of condensed in one spot is better than having crime spread all throughout the city where it's hard to keep track of right because I'm pretty sure everyone here knows everyone Bill even kind of confirmed it that everyone knows about the about the back alley market it's just that no one says anything right they just kind of pretend that it doesn't exist whereas in my opinion the back alley market is the lesser of two evils carnivores need meat that is a that is a biological fact right Sure, can they survive off of it? Like without it? Sure, they can. They can get along with substitutes just fine. But innately, they're going to want it. They're going to crave it. And it's not like the animals are alive, you know? This butcher shop isn't selling live animal. I mean, sure, the sickos in this world might actually want live meat because Louis is a prime example. He was sold as, you know, as a as as live uh is li is living food when he was a child right but this is the lesser of the two evils the meat's already dead he probably procured it from uh, a funeral home or something like that but you know knowing b stars it's probably gonna get darker like probably kidnapping animals on this on the streets to have fresh meat but i'm probably getting ahead of myself but i'd say this is this is this would be a good deal in my opinion so what you carnivores are under a great misconception. There are two things that divide the animals of this world. Not carnivores and herbivores. That's too simple. What really divides us is more complex and distinct. Winners and losers. That's all there is to it. You're exactly right. You did a great job with that deal. You're amazing, boss. Oh, okay. So we got the deal. Nice. So I like how they just sit here fine dining on like wine and like what's it red wine and like tenderloins and steaks wow it's been years since we ate food like this we're moving ahead ever so slightly reforming this group was the right thing to do hmm. from the standpoint of a deer you carnivores make using your feral instincts easier than it seems Louis is just he's just chilling here I love it I love seeing Louie like this. He's at his best when he's being the boss of stuff. But um, but I like... back Going back to this deal real quick. I like that his words were backed up. 
you know, with this belief. Just because Louis here in person and he's endorsing it as a herbivore, that's powerful. And that's going to get people on board to what he wants to do. Just because it's coming from a herbivore, right? That doesn't happen in their world. That's taboo. Like herbivores, the last thing you would expect is a herbivore to promote the consumption of meat. And he's in a shop that sells deer meat. So that's pretty nuts when you think about it. So his word is kind of like a bond. <laughs> you, you take out their skin and they're all the same. Mm. Okay, so that's kind of like his racism right there. He's like, yeah, you herb, like I'm not herbivores. Yeah, you carnivores are all the same. <laughs> you're all feral. You're all feral bastards. You're all monsters. Ha, <laughs> that's pretty mean. The boss is basically selling himself. It's admirable. Yeah, pretty much. It's not like I approve of me eating meat. But now that I'm stuck here, I need to adapt to the rules of this environment. That's all. Okay, so Louis still eating meat. I figured, I, I thought like his consumption of meat was just the test he had to, to, you know, become the leader of the Shishigumi, but he still continues to eat it. I mentioned before that deers are opportune, like the majority of animals are opportunistic carnivores when given the chance because that's the most efficient way to obtain their like, you know, their protein and, you know, their nutrients in the wild. Even butter butterflies will drink your blood if you give them the chance to do it, right? But that doesn't mean he can necessarily survive off of just meat. Like, it's a biological fact that, you know, deers are herbivores for a reason, right? Sure, they could get nutrients and stuff, but their bodies are designed to eat grass, right? And, like, grain. So, I like how this lion right here... I think this one, this is the youngest, right? Because he had freckles. I think this is Agata. Uh, is this free? No, it's not free. It's uh, Ibuki, right? He's looking at Louie. Notice how he's framed. How, you know, how he's framed in the light. How attention is being put on Ibuki right now, which means Ibuki sees something. He notices something about Louie. And how Louie's in shadow, how the attention's off of him. So I'm wondering if he's thinking the same thing I'm still thinking. Like, how has he been sustaining himself off of meat? I don't know how long he's been with the Shishigumi. He's been gone for like, like two months, so how long has he been eating meat like this? Well, I'll leave you guys to take care of the dishes. He ate everything on his plate. I'll be in my room coming, with a, coming up with our future plans. What? You're done already, boss? Don't compare the size of my stomach to yours eat without me yes sir we trust you boss you're the best shut up and eat <laughs> he loves it he loves the attention like they're like stroking his ego but I'm wondering okay so Louie left the table right well we've never seen Louie eat anything now that I think about it and it, I think it's kind of strange that our first uh, I always call that our first moment seeing Louis eating eating is is meat right so now that he has time to himself time to rest how long has he been doing this because he's retiring to his quarters right my guess is that he's tired right why would he earls why would he be along because when he when characters go to the room you see it all the time in like anime and other media when characters retreat by themselves it's where they can be themselves for a minute because when he's with these guys right here louis has to put on a front right this is a fake hate right because we've seen hints of the real louis right this is the fr the same front he's had at school just kind of turned up to 11 right now right he has to be strong all the time because he's surrounded by carnivores. The things, you know, the things he despises. He hates carnivores for what they did to him, you know, and for what they do and for what who they pretend to be, you know. Even at school, he was like, "Yeah, carnivores and herbivores, they can't, they can't really be friends because you're just gonna, you're just gonna turn on me and eat me at some point when you get older." That's Louis' worldview, which is why he's talking down to him like this, you know filthy cats meat-eating savages so let's see what happens now okay he collapses 
damn, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try to convince myself, no matter how much time has passed, alcohol, meat, cigarettes, always throwing up, are still indigestible. I've managed to sustain myself with energy drinks. I don't know if my body will last. Mmm, okay, so that's what's happening. He's even like, is he losing weight as well? Okay, so this looks familiar. Like, notice notice the scene right now. Every time Louis thinks he's by himself and he's alone, there's a run there's been a running gag since the very first chapter we met Louis in. Right? How this door is right here and Louis in his head right now, yeah? He's always like someone always comes in on him and he's like, I thought I told you to knock. That's been like a like a that's been consistent <laughs> with Louis. It's kinda like a gag, right? Well, not a gag. A gag is kind of like slapstick, right? But it's like someone always comes into his world. Before it was Legacy, you know. I thought I, you know, I thought I told you to knock, right? His underlings coming in uh, from the stage crew. I thought I told you to knock. So I'm wondering who's gonna show up now. And my guess, from what we've already seen, I have a pretty strong idea that it's gonna be. Where is he? Ibuki right here just because of how he's being framed. He's the most likely to come in that he's the most likely to come in the room right now Right because I'm not sure this face seems like it's a face of concern. Like does he know? What's going on? So if we go back Here we go. Yep, Ibuki shows up right boss I like how Louie gets up. He puts the trash back <laughs> over here in the corner of the wall. Because at first he was right here, right? But now he quickly put the, you know, the trash can back in the wall and got his composure so he can, you know, he puts on that front, that fake aid. And he's like, yes, you know, I'm impregnable. I'm the boss. I'm Louie. You know, the epitome of strength, you know, what you want, what you wish you can be. <laughs> but it's like, Okay, his walls are back up. And who enters his world right now? Ibuki. I was gonna go with you to guys to buy some booze, but I came here because I was worried about you. Are you feeling okay? You look pale. I'm okay. What do you want? You're losing weight. Ah, so he was losing weight. I thought that before because look how uh look how he clinches like his uh his wrist, right? You know with his index finger and his thumb he's getting thinner weaker you know and you can characters have a tendency to do that as a way to measure themselves like oh I've lost weight and it starts with the hands oh not just the hands I think the hands are like the last things but yeah but Ibuki came back so you know what does he have you're losing weight shit I'm the one who made you the boss does he know that my body is getting weaker? What is he planning? I should take responsibility. Aw, he got him a salad. That's awesome. Right? Okay, so I was right before when I called out Ibuki. He's, I, he seems like he's the most responsible member of the group, right? He's not the oldest by any means. But I'd say he's... Mm, I would say if it wasn't Louis that took over the Shishigumi, I would say Ibuki would probably be the de facto leader. Right? Because the sense of loyalty. Right now. Because he was one of the first lions we got introduced to, along with Free. Right? And he's the one who made uh, Louis the boss of the Shishigumi <laughs> when Free wanted to just go ahead and eat him when Louis offered. Right? He was like, no, wait. He should become our new boss. This was his idea. So I love that he's taking responsibility for Louis. So he got him a salad. And I'm pretty sure, given Louis's character, right? Louis hates being in positions where he's shown he where he's being shown as weak. Right? And sure, he may need salad, but given Louis's pride, you know, it would be very much in line with his character to tell for him to tell Ibuki to fuck right off. And take that salad with them, right? Even though he needs the salad. He needs to eat salad. Yeah? So let's see what he says. 
I had to go to the main streets to get this. I've never bought something like this before. I was pretty nervous. What's your deal? Are you trying to make a fool out of me? There it is. Those are vegetables. I knew you would react like this. Why are you so damn stubborn? Quit neglecting your body. You're not only important to the Shishigumi. You've also got a chance of changing the chaos at the back alley market. You're no good to anyone dead. You know I can't bear to see my new boss breaking down because of me. I know this might sound strange, but when I see you, I feel my appetite for meat going away. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go back here for a second. Look how Louie looks right now. Right? He's taken aback by, you know, the thought of a lion. You know, who he, I'm pretty sure how Louie viewed as just a cold-blooded, bloodthirsty lion. You know, savage scoundrel of a meat eater offering him a salad. Like, is this a joke? Are you nuts? Right? But look how, what's his name? Ibuki's words kind of cuts into him, right? Louie turns his head away because he doesn't want to look at him. Right now, Ibuki's showing a lot of authority. Kind of like a parent towards Louie. Have we seen Louis' dad? I forget. We've seen him once. I think his name was Oguma. Yeah, Oguma. Right? And Louis like, you know, you know, he's right. He's really right, right? So I like that this character is really valuing Louis. And it doesn't seem, and he's not coming off in an aggressive manner either, right? Look at his face. This is genuine concern over him. It's not like, hey boss, I know you're getting weaker, eat this salad. You know, it's like, hey, no, you need to take care of yourself. Because Louie's still a kid, right? And this guy's like, what, 35? So, there would be some, like, I don't know. I don't know. He might be a father, but we'll see. And another thing to note, he says he feels his appetite. Ibuki feels like his appetite for me is going the way the more he talks to Louie, right? So, where have we seen that before? Like, Legos, he doesn't have an appetite for meat. I mean, he does. You know, that's kind of innate, right? But it's like, the more he interacted with Haru, it's not like he was sitting there thinking about her flavor and trying to eat her, because Legos, he's never had meat before, right? But it's like, the more he got, the more he socialized with Haru, it's like meat, it's like, it's funny, because it's like, the time he tried to eat her never got brought up again until the very end, because that wasn't even on his mind, so... I wonder if that's a like a thematic echo like that's gonna be a theme like if you socialize with the carnivore I mean if you socialize with the herbivore does that kind of suppress your uh, meat eating desires so that's, that's interesting to think about so continuing I know you're doing the best you can despite how different you are from all of us but this is for your body you need to nourish yourself Hmm. Louis knows he's right. That's why he's silent right now. And he's looking at that salad like <laughs> like it's a real snack. Like after he's been eating meat all this time, it's a real treat. Much more scrumptious than cigarettes, alcohol, and uh and uh meat. Did you want to see me drooling for vegetables so you can sneer at me? Where's my respect? His damn pride, right? Louis's pride gets in the louis pride gets in his way like sometimes right but his walls are coming down again right <laughs> every time there are characters that just get under louis skin and it's it's good to see that you know outside of lego see there's another one i bet he's gonna be the one that breaks down louis walls little by little it just seems that way to me because you know louis he he's dropping his front now you know He's not huffing and puffing like he was before. He's like, don't talk to me like I'm some child, you know? Show me respect. I'm the boss. So let's see. What? How can you be so... <laughs> Even he's gonna say it. Do you think you understand me? You lions don't know a damn thing about me. Oh, they get interrupted. Boss! There's a young wolf who wants to see you. A wolf? Wait, is it Legosy? I don't think Legosy knows. No, I don't think like... What do you mean a young wolf? Juno? No way. What's Juno doing here? I, I'm i a female. If you touch me, I'll bite you. Just let me see him. 
And he's like, what? I, see, look, there it is again. Like, sure, Louis' walls are coming down right now when he's talking to Ibuki, but I like when Juno shows up because Juno actually has kind of like, he has rapport from Louis. And Louis always breaks his composure when weird shit happens. <laughs> the last person he expects to show up at the door? Freaking Juno of all people. Like, how did Juno know? You would expect Legosi to be there, but Juno of all people? That's crazy. A wolf comes to see Louis, but it's not Legosi, it's Juno. Why? Like I said before, I believe that Louis respects Juno a lot more than he respects Legosi right now just because Juno isn't afraid to showcase who she is and use her power as she seems as she deems fit, right? She's all just like Louis, Juno is at her best when she is in control and she is dominating like the situation. That's why I'd say these two are pretty pretty similar to each other. They both wanted to be B stars. Juno's the most likely candidate now just because Louis's not at school anymore. So that's fascinating to me. That's really good to see. And I love that Juno has her own agency. She's a character that is very much off to the sidelines most of the time. Like she comes up here and there. But this is Louis I mean not my bad. This is Legosi's story, right? And Louis kind of like the secondary protagonist, and then you have Juno here, that that's just kind of off doing her own thing off screen. And I like to see that she has her own agency, even though we don't know what she's doing 24/7. It kind of makes her unpredictable, like I said before, when we uh, <laughs> when we uh, had her scene with Louis under the spotlight, pinning him down. You know, so good to see. Well, I'm excited. I always like seeing these two together. They're funny. So. I can't wait to see it. I'll see you during chapter uh, 57. Bye now. Oh, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. Okay, bye for real.